Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. Thanks for stopping by. If you like what we make here, please do us a huge solid and hit the like and subscribe button down below. We also live stream the podcast every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central, and I host a video game live stream on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central, so come by and hang out. If you're feeling extra giving, please check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, and enjoy the show. Mind Gap Podcast. everybody welcome to mind gap podcast i'm doug i'm justin and it's another glorious day here with you welcome to our church uh please it's- leave some money in the tin and uh you know hopefully the services will meet your respective expectations you know and if not it doesn't matter because we run the church and it's tax-free so welcome it's to the church for us <laughs> this was worth a, a half an hour wait. I hope so, Wolf. I hope so. Wolf, you were you got here real early. Wolf Wolf took advantage of the doors opening very early here. Yes, he did. He just came in, sat down, and was like, This is what this is what we play for. You know? It's like I claim my seat. This is what I'm here for. So yeah. Welcome everybody. We're so glad you're here. I'm excited. Uh we got some good stuff to talk about tonight. But before we get into it, let's get into some housekeeping. Let's get started. So uh, first things first, if you were like, hey, where can we find you guys? It's a at, at my Gap podcast on, on all, all our social medias. There you go. Easy. That's it. Bing, bang, boom. Done. If you're like, hey, we want to support you. How can we do that? Well, guess what? I got a couple of ways. Number one, you can check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash mindgap podcast. Subscribe to us, $5 tier or $1 tier, whatever suits your budget. Either way, we're thrilled to have it. Number two, check out our merch at redbubble.com. Search for Mind Gap Podcast, all one word, and you will find our merchandise. Pick yourself up something nice with them. Sweet Mind Gap logo. Wear it around. People will be like, what's that? It's like, I don't know, it's a podcast with two guys that I like. They have a fart soundboard. You should check it out right here. Mind Gap Podcast. We would love it. If you're like, Doug, listen, my budget's tight. You know, the, the consumer price index just came out today and they're saying, hey, man, inflation is higher than I thought it would be. Prices are going up. I don't know, man, the Fed, are they going to stop this inflation? Are we going into a recession? What does this year mean from a macroeconomic perspective? Well, good news. All you have to do is click on like and subscribe on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash podcast. It costs you literally nothing and it means everything to us. So go ahead and do that. And by the way, if you're subscribing to Patreon, you could be one of the really cool people such as Wolfslore. Tom McIntyre, Richie Armour, Zenny, Slutty Bartfast, and Almighty Crit, all of whom subscribe to the Mind Gap Podcast Patreon. And we thank you dearly, dearly, dearly. Thank you for your support. We appreciate you. Also, if you'd like to connect with us even more, check out our Discord server. The link is in the description below on YouTube. Go check that out. You can join. You can join us for our video game nights. You can hang out with us, shoot the shit, share memes. Uh, we have really good, fun conversations. You can contribute to the podcast using the Ask Practical Doug, Doug channel. You can submit throwdown ideas, all sorts of stuff available at your disposal, which is great. And if you're like, man, where can I get in on this live? Check us out at youtube.com slash podcast. Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central, we broadcast live and record. And on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Central, I host a video game stream of all sorts of wonderful goodies. And last Saturday, I played Ultimate Chicken Horse, which was a lot more fun this time. Still stressful, but still. And still the best name for a game ever created, period, hard stop. Yes. Uh, it, it's essentially a game where you and up to uh, three other players uh, build your own platform level. It starts out very simple or very hard. And your goal is to get from point A to point B without dying. If everyone gets there, nobody gets any points. If nobody gets there, nobody gets any points. So it's just got to be hard enough that at least one person doesn't make it for you to get the points. And uh, a little bit of death. And man, of death. these these guys are they are merciless. They are tricksy, and boy, do they put the hurt on you. And it is it's wild. And I actually won two rounds. I was shocked. <laughs> I was like, let's just end the stream here, man. I fucking won. Like, calling it. 
Like, and then I won again. I was like, what the hell? How is this possible? I'm terrible at the game. But it was a re- it was really, really, really a lot of fun. We had a really good time. So this Saturday, 8 p.m. Central, we're talking April 16th. We've got special guest C2, the Twitch streamer who's been in on here a couple times. Easter. What's up? In honor of Easter. In honor of Easter, we're bringing C2 on to play some What the Dub with us. And if you have not... <laughs> played what the dub with us you are in for a treat uh it's essentially kind of like a jackbox like game where you get to watch a i don't know c movie clip uh it is from really bad films and you get to see this quick clip and then you get to put in the uh the, the response like you get to fill in the dialogue and it's really fun it usually gets filthy um and it's, it's gonna be shockingly quick Yes, it's, it gets dirty real quick. It's really, really fun. So please come check us out. I think that's going to be a really good time. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be great. So, and then the following Saturday, I think we're going to fire up Gary's Mod, which I just recently bought. I've heard about it for a long time. It's on Steam, and we're we're looking to do some prop hunt. I think is what we're going to be doing. I don't know what any of that means. Essentially, uh, I've shown you this before, Justin. Uh, prop hunt is essentially something where you you're there's two teams. There's hunters and there's props. You load into a level, and as a prop, you try to hide in with the background because the, the 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 whole oh, the whole level's great. filled with just stuff. And the yes. hunters have to go and try to find the props that are actually people. But every time they fire, they lose health, so this can't fire indiscriminately. And you can move and things like that. And it is we played some shitty free version of this game. We're like, we'll we'll do this the right way through Gary's mod, and. Um, we also might play Trouble in Terrace Town, which is essentially like Among Us, but a little bit different. Um, really looking forward to that. I think we're going to have a good time. So, again, youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. You can find That's all of our stuff there and check us out for our live streams. I'm super excited. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So That sounds like an absolute blast. Because I'm assuming like the part of the game is you walk down a hallway and you, you clock what's there and you turn the corner. If you come back down, you're like, that garbage can wasn't always there. Or it's like, why is there a garbage can here? Because right. you don't necessarily get to select what you are. You just are assigned a prop. So if you're just like a hot dog sitting in the middle of a hallway. Right. Yeah. Right. Like we, we played a free version of it and we were at this like, I don't know, warehouse slash junkyard. Yeah. And at one point, uh, Noah was a rack of clothes. And he was like, uh, uh, or I was playing as a hunter and I just stood in one spot and like halfway through the round, they make you change. And I watched okay. Slotty was playing. He was something normal. And then he was like this bright red, like billboard. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> pretty sure that he goes, oh, this isn't fair. And I just shot him and killed him. So it was, his, uh, you know, that's amazing. Yeah, it was. Man, pl- yeah, I wish I could play that one with you guys. Yeah, I mean, one, I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be shooting that weekend. Oh, OK, gotcha. Yeah, shooting we're, props. We're back and, what's that? <laughs> You're going to be shooting some props. So I'm going to be shooting some props that week. So I am playing with you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Slotty goes, yeah, that was less than ideal. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to it because that's a game where you want to get as many people as possible yes. in on it. And hopefully we can really pull in a lot of folks because I think some of these servers, I mean, you can play these games with up to like 30 some people. So oh my God, this is a terrible. this is a calling at all hands. If you have Steam and you have Gary's mod, which is t- a mere $10, come join us. I think we're going to have some fun. So oh, that's the other thing. Does it work on Max? Who knows? Like even if that was available. Listen, it's it's based around the same things as like Half Life and Team Fortress Two. So if Team Fortress Two runs on your machine, this should run too. Not anymore. Well, who Team knows? Fortress used to be two bit. Who to be knows? So yeah, but anyway, um, <laughs> Zinni goes. Woo! Got to load that sucker up again. I'm a maybe. Jared, why don't you make yourself a yes? Why don't you put huh? a little more positivity in your life, pal? Huh? Yeah. Huh? 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 Come on, Jared. You ever thought about that? Huh? Yeah. Think about it, Jared. Got a lot of busy times ahead? Yeah. We can't spare two hours for your buddies on a Sunday morning? Come on. Jesus, Jared. Yeah. Richie. Oh, my God. Richie playing Prop Hunter? Or Richie playing Trouble in Terrace Town? Oh, my God. I want to see Richie in a deception like game where Richie has to bullshit his way through something. Like, that sounds like so much fun. I wish you didn't work weekends too, Mr. Wolf. Anyway, um,. Super excited. We got some good stuff coming. But more importantly, I've got a movie update. <gasps> Tell me. Do, 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 do. Uh, so Natalie, Jurassic Park, huge hit with Natalie. Gigantic yeah. hit. How many times have you watched it so far? Uh, at least three times. Nice. So she's a big fan. She's such a huge fan. 
she wanted to watch the quote unquote next movie, but okay. I didn't want to tell her that Jurassic Park two and three exist. So I was like, I show her the trailer for Jurassic World. I'm like, you want to watch that one? She goes, yeah. I'm like, all right. I've seen that movie once. Um, why not? So I bought can it. I, can, can I first jump in real quick and just say that this, Doug, is the foundation for how relationships get fractured down the road. Probably. She's years down the road. She's going to see that there's a Jurassic Park 2 and 3 and go, nothing my dad told me was true. I'm like, yeah, and you're welcome. Because she's going to watch them and be like, yeah, these aren't very good. The girl doing gymnastics to uh, fight the uh, Velociraptor in, in Jurassic Park 2. Today, Junior. In J J Jurassic Park 2? Yeah, no, she's going to thank me for it. So I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. I still don't remember that part. You've, you've referenced that many times in the last I don't week remember of most of the film. I know Jeff Goldblum's like the lead character in it. And uh, I know that at one point the T-Rex uh, lands in San Francisco or some shit and gets off and starts eating people through the city. Um yeah, it's it's not a good film. I mean, I've got it pulled up. Should we just play it the audio for people? Just and just sit here and listen to it. I don't think we should. Okay, cool. I think that's how you get flagged for uh, nah. DMCA shit. Um, I'm gonna. I'll say this: the owners of the Jurassic Park two would probably thank us. Like, yay! We saw a spike of less than Bingo. tens of people Bingo. checking out this film. <laughs> <laughs> I love Richie goes, I bullshitted my way through life so far. Sounds like a piece of piss. I get you there, buddy. Go bullshitting yes. through a game. I love it. Uh, now he will like the gymnast girl, I guess. Um, so, so we, I fired up uh, Jurassic World. I'd seen it once before. Mm -hmm. And I remember it being a movie. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I'm disappointed about how much I remembered about the film. Because that means that's taking up space for for more important things it's like no 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 let's keep these plot points to this film in your brain and like forget important <laughs> things you know um but it's entertaining it's a fun movie i would probably liken it to like a fast and the furious kind of film it's just like enjoyable yeah, yeah. hey tints here St welcome welcome back pal nice to see you um yeah so uh we, we i was like listen I'm not as familiar with this one, so if it gets scary, I'm sorry. I can't warn you in advance like I've done in the past. Like with, you know, I've seen Jurassic Park just oodles of time, so I'm be like, oh, Dilophosaurus, here it comes. That park's going to be scary. Oh, watch out. Velociraptors hit. You know, like I can do all that. This, I'm like, we'll see. She fucking loved it. Absolutely loved it. Loved the yeah. movie. I was really concerned because, have you seen the movie? Yes. Uh, the, with the Indominus Rex, I'm like, that ah, gets kind of scary. You know, it's a bigger creature. But she actually has those toys, a toy of a T-Rex and an Indominus Rex, and they both roar and everything like that. So, um, yeah, it's it was it was exciting. Oh, it's nice to see your text. He says, it's nice to see our faces live. Thank you, buddy. And thanks for joining us for Ultimate uh, Chicken Horse on Saturday. It was very fun having you play. Um, but, yeah, it, so she, she watched it and she fucking loved it. She absolutely loved the, the movie, and as, as soon as it was done, she's like, well, can we watch the next one? And I'm like, look, and, look I, I haven't seen Fallen World, and I don't really want to buy it. So I was like, <laughs> listen, I was like, it's not streaming. She's like, ah, I go, but there's a third one coming out in June. And she's like, there is? I'm like, yes. The, she's watched that trailer a bajillion times because she just fucking it, loves still dinosaurs. still surprised by it, yeah. She loves dinosaurs, just fucking loves them. And I was like, yeah, that one's not out yet. She's like, well, can we go see it? I'm like, well, it's coming out in theaters. She goes, can we go to the theater? I'm like, I mean, maybe. I don't know if that's a movie you want to see in the theaters or not. I mean, I this was a whole different level, man. Like, of, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, I, I like I do because I want to have that movie going experience with you. But I don't know sure. if you're going to get scared. And this isn't like Frozen where it's cool if kids are like laughing and talking right. during the movie. I'm like, this is a legit movie. So you got to shut up. And yeah. You, <laughs> The thing is, your daughter might become the thing that you loathe at the theaters. Yeah. The kid who's talking. I'm terrified and of that. Kicking and laughing. Because well, yeah. she'll get like overly dramatically scared. She'll be like, Hah! like, she'll do stuff like that. I'm like, stop it. You know? <laughs> I, and part of the things, too, I just have to say, hey, listen, this is fake. This is not real. Okay. Right. None of this is real. And it's so funny because I guess the second time she watched it on Girls Night, she goes, this isn't real. This isn't real. Like she's like she pumping herself up, reminding her this isn't real. And then I get the string of questions. Dad, she just calls out a very specific part. And again, I'm pissed that I know exactly what she's saying. Cause this we'll be talking about name something. And then she'll be like, dad, I thought the blood 
was going to come from something other than the Indominus Rex. But it actually was coming from its mouth because it already had blood in its mouth because it ate something. And I'm like, and I know exactly what part she's talking about, which is when the Indominus Rex ripped out its tracker. And I go, well, maybe it's not because it ate something because it's ripped its, its tracker out. She goes, oh, how did it know to do that? I go, I guess it was just smart. She goes, I guess it was. You know, just. <laughs> I guess it was. She's like, how do they make the Indominus Rex? I'm like, science, a lot of science. Genetics. Yeah, a lot of genetics. Yeah. They did something they shouldn't have, you know? And it's like, well, Pay why did they make it? Cool. Why did they make it? Well, they wanted to make something that was bigger and better. We're going to kind of see this when we go to Disney World. We're going to see attractions that they're trying to bring people to, you know? It's kind of the same thing, you know? Yeah. They'll get there eventually. Just less murdery. <laughs> yeah, for now, yeah. that we know of. I mean, look, the mouse needs to... The mouse needs blood. The mouse That's needs all to eat. The mouse needs to eat. It's feeding And when the time. mouse is hungry, it will feed. Yes. Jared says, take her to Mo- Morbius first. She can practice in an empty theater. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> I, 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 that one out I keep saying this for whatever reason. Like, I feel bad for that movie. I don't know I why. You feel empathy for this movie. I, I, it's just because it's it's a movie There's that no got reason. it got kicked around. It's release date so many times, and mm. I, I guess it's just one of those things where this has to be one of the worst feelings as like a creator of something or some. If you're in something, you're like, hey, listen. We still gotta go full force in the marketing here, okay? Because there's a chance. It's like you got four cards in Texas Hold'em. You're like, I'm waiting for this last card here. And might give me something that I could use to make some bank. I'm really betting on this last card. And it's like Jared Leto's showing up to theaters and doing all sorts of stuff. They still got to do the press runs. Yep. But they know deep down, they're like, this is not a good movie. And I guess I heard the director, they're like, you know, what do you think about this movie? He's like, I think it's awesome. They're like, what do you think about everyone else's response? He's like, I don't give a shit. I think it's great. I like what I made. That's that. Yeah, I like what I did. So in that regard, good for him. Like if that's if that's the case, if this person and the actors, Leto and everyone else that was involved in it, if they're truly happy with the outcome, then that's that's at the end of the day. That's what matters, because everyone's a critic. Everyone's going to have an opinion. There are those that will like the movie. The movie will make money at the box office. It's because it's a superhero movie. And, you know, that is what it is. But, you know, uh, I think when you're making a superhero movie, if Sony is attached to it, you're you all you have to you have to know what you're getting into. Yeah, you have to know. Because well, what I hate about it is there's ties to the Spider-Man universe with it. Because Morbius is oh, yes. often connected with Spider-Man. Yes. I think was it Michael Keaton's Vulture makes an appearance in the film. Like there's they're just they're playing with something they don't understand and they're it's trying to replicate, but they can't. Sony's Sony's Spider Verse. Like mm-hmm. they have they have fully committed publicly that they they own they're doing the spider verse they're gonna all their movies are gonna connect around one singular property and you know god bless them for trying um, but you know the deal i read that the deal that they struck like tom holland apparently went to the mat to to get them to negotiate with marvel to have them finish out that that uh Trilogy, and then to, yeah, and 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 to keep Spider Man there. But one of the things I guess with that deal was that Sony could make movies with Marvel in the MCU, and they could make Spider Man movies that didn't exist in the. MCU. They basically Sony can pull a DC, and it can just be whatever we want to do. Yeah, and I'm like that is horribly, horribly dangerous. But at the same time, I can look at this and be like, these are two separate things. Like I can easily look at these and be like. You can. Yes. You and I can. A lot of our viewers and listeners can. The general populace, they're not going to get that. Well, especially when you sort of have like Michael Keaton's vulture show up in Morbius. It's like, well, what are we doing here? Like, Right. (laughs) What what, what, what are we doing here? What are you trying to pull? What kind of bullshit are you trying to pull, Sony? What kind of bullshit is this, Sony? What the fuck? Uh, Speaking of like what the fuck kind of bullshit is this, what is the metaverse, Justin? (laughs) Doug, I'm glad you asked. Starting with Lawnmower Man in yes. 1990 something. Two. Three. Two? Three. Was it that early? I was uh, going to say like 96. Lawnmower Man. 92. I had it right the first time. 
Holy shit, look at you. Honestly, the juice isn't worth the squeeze on the don't look don't don't do any more research on it. Uh I've seen the no movie. Knows, I know. No one knows what the metaverse is, Doug. That's the bottom line. Well a lot of people think they know what it is. And I'll tell you what, the metaverse has sodi pop. Sodi pop. Metaverse brought to you by Coca-Cola Bite. <laughs> Spelled B Y T E. Yep. Not a fan of this. Not a fan of anything about this. Well, according to here's the definition. Uh, from The Verge, it says uh, Silicon Valley metaverse proponents sometimes reference a description from venture capitalist Matthew Bell, the author of the extensive Metaverse Primer. The metaverse is an expansive network of persistent real-time rendered 3D worlds and simulations that support continuity of identity, objects, history, payments, and entitlements and can be experienced synchron synchronously by an effectively unlimited number of users, each with an individual sense of presence. That sounds like the most corporate explanation for anything ever. Uh, and Facebook, who has like the biggest stake in it, says the metaverse is a set of virtual spaces where you can create and explore with other people who aren't in the same physical space as you. This sounds like an MMO. That's what it sounds like. It's uh, we've again, like we were talking off mic. We've done this before. Second Life. Like this has this has existed unless. Unless there is a larger, yet to be conceived iteration of this, where they're going to take it, all this sounds like is just a 3D model of a world that yeah. you pop. It's Ready Player One. You pop your goggles on and you go hang out. I don't. I I just don't understand what the draw is for this. Yeah. No, it, I agree. Like the Facebook's uh, description of it sounds more palatable. Which I'm bummed that I'm even saying that, but Facebook's description of it sounds more palatable. The the first nonsense that you read, that was just that's that is that's like if if corporate America took a shit on a memo, that is what that is. It's just nonsense words. Yeah, I agree. And uh, it's so funny because this article has like a bunch of questions. One says people keep saying NFTs are part of the metaverse. Why? <laughs> it's like, yeah, why? <laughs> Because um, no one knows. No one can refute it. That's why. Yeah. Wolf goes, Final Fantasy fourteen is my metaverse, and I'm a black mage. There you go. Now we're talking. Tint's like, it's seasoned with anti-aliasing. I love it. <laughs> Pixel flavored with anti-aliasing. <laughs> Guys, we're going to start a hashtag here. We want this trending. Hashtag, what is your metaverse? Well, here's the thing. is like I get why some of these corporations are getting in on this, because if you get in on the ground floor... There's a lot of virtual real estate that you can occupy there. But the problem is, in my stupid opinion, if the metaverse is going to be cool, it's not going to be because Coke is there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like That's not a stupid opinion, Doug. That's the correct opinion. Like Coke is, like, is, is, is the living embodiment of the... Uh, um, Steve Buscemi, you know, meme like, hello, fellow students. It's like, <laughs> we're in the metaverse, you know? <laughs> well, I guess I don't even understand what you're, when you say like getting it at the ground floor, you can occupy more real estate. In what capacity? Because the metaverse is presumably limitless. Yes, but Coca-Cola is already there before the majority of people get there. So Coca-Cola can establish its corporate... Oh. Um, tentacles in all so the digital holes. So it's, ooh. it's like its own meta hentai, you know? It's, <laughs> thank you for jumping there before I did. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Welcome it, to digital hentai in the multiverse. I mean, metaverse. We're Coca Cola. Bite. <laughs> Drink um, up because this is going to hurt. This is going to, you're going to want it. Yeah. You're going to hate um, this. This, it's it's very similar to uh, uh, getting a new a brand new job that has just been created at a company, and you get to kind of define what that job is, what that role is. Coca Cola getting their foothold in here, they can. I feel like they can almost then help structure what does the metaverse, what are the definitions, what are the rules inside the metaverse. They they get to lay down the original ground or some of the original groundwork. Is what it sounds like. Yeah, me. and they could just sort of establish themselves in this place before it's fully populated, if you will, right? Because I think the hard thing is when communities already exist and then corporations try to, you know, infiltrate mm 
mm-hmm. is difficult because people are like, yeah, we don't really want you here. But if Coke is already there, right. then Coke's like, we've we've put our flag down here. You know, it's it's something that, you know, I think Nike's getting involved and some of these other, you know, corporations are, are staking a claim in the metaverse because they want to be there as a brick. Because think about that. If people start spending more time in this metaverse, right, they're going to be exposed to more branding. And if there's only a handful of brands there outright, you would like to, you would, you think that that investment would pay off in the short term because you've established your foothold there. People come in, the first thing you think or see are things like Coke, Nike. Their brands right. exist. There's some some level of conversion. Maybe you can spend two virtual bucks to get some cool Nike NFT sneakers that only exist for your avatar, right? Yeah. You know, like Coke was already saying because they released this, I love this article from PC Gamer. They're making metaverse flavored Coke now. Uh, and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar Bite will bring pixels alive in a taste experience, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I This whole thing that Coca-Cola is verging on the same area that, that PETA plays in. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, guys, guys, dial it back because you're starting to get out of hand. You're You're missing the mark. This is getting weird. No one wants this. You're not your message is is off brand like the whole starlight thing. And then this pixel thing when they're like, this is the taste of space. We're making digitals. You, you can taste digital pixels like I this is this is getting to a point where they're starting to lose. I think they're losing their grip on reality a little bit. Well, I also I hate it because a part of me appreciates it because they're trying to tell a story. Right. And f- from that regard, I appreciate anyone who tries. Are they? they are. They are okay. trying to they're trying to tell a story of their product. I don't believe that story okay. at all. But I appreciate the approach. They're trying to be creative with it, right? And sure, there's, I suppose. Yeah, but- you know, I cause the the author of this article, which is uh Tyler Wild, by the way, uh on PC Gamer, says he goes, um Product announcements which invoke the metaverse always leave me feeling like I'm trying to comprehend the nature of a square triangle. For example, Coca-Cola said last week that its new limited edition metaverse soda is inspired by the playfulness of pixels. What does playfulness taste like? What does a pixel taste like? What makes playful pixels playful? He says, um, apparently these questions can only be found in, in a sip of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar Bite, which it claims is rooted in the experiences that gaming... that." <laughs> gaming makes possible also not a flavor and will be available in slim can two packs starting may 2nd uh they're only available they're only you can only purchase them online and coca-cola says makes them a portal between the digital and physical worlds <laughs> what that doesn't make any again you are losing touch with reality that's not a story that's the ramblings of a lunatic right someone in their marketing department has locked themselves in a room, won't let anyone in, security cannot get in there, and they're just firing out press releases. Yeah. Oh, this for is sure. nonsense. This is nonsense. Coke's meaningful statement about its new metaverse liquid is that it tastes bright. So citrusy, maybe? The company also says that the soda's upfront taste is reminiscent of a power of powering up a game. <laughs> and the author says, but I refuse We've to accept crumbled. that anyone genuinely believes that. <laughs> We've crumbled up old NES cartridges into our Coke. Yeah. Blow into it first and then drink it. Uh, well, it's funny because he goes, then again, my favorite description of Diet Coke, which used to be many times a day habit for me, is that it's like drinking an algorithm. So maybe I'm not giving Coca-Cola enough credit for understanding its own products. <laughs> I um, guess the thing that I still don't understand about the metaverse, unless you had something else to go Well, it also says, maybe a sip of Coca-Cola is zero bite. Zero sugar bite, which by the way, god damn, what a long name for your product. Coca Coca Cola Zero Sugar Bite really does bring pixels alive in a taste experience because it's a metaverse soda. The Coke Bite launch includes a Fortnite creative island, it gives a code, which features four mini games that can only be solved by working in tandem with fellow players, as well as a separate augmented reality game that tells the story of Bite. The 8-bit pixel left behind when Coca-Cola Bite entered the metaverse. Blah. Man, I don't look. I uh, maybe they're. I don't know. I'm. I'm having such conflicted feelings about this. Like, is the audience for this the same? When when Minecraft came out and 12-year-olds lost their mind, is 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 that the new like 
that equivalent. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what that age bracket is now is, is that who this is going after? Because this does nothing for me other than enrage me. Well, I don't me. think it's for us for starters. I don't think for we're sure. the target yeah. market for this. And obviously if they're trying to get in on Fortnite, there's a very specific demographic they're trying right, to get in Garrett. with that. Um, I find it hilarious that they think that I, f anytime I've even remotely entertained ideas like this where corporate America is like, check out this cool game. It's always been a shit game. It's never been oh, fun. Absolutely. Yeah. So I can only imagine where, where they're like, first of all, check out this new mini game that you can do in Fortnite. And also it can all be solved by working in tandem with fellow players. Do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> right. Have you played Fortnite? <laughs> do you know what's going to happen? I played you recently. Know you know what audience? it was? People just riding on trains and doing dances. I've seen the clip. I've yeah. seen the clip. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely I, crazy. Thing, the thing that I still don't understand about the metaverse is that is it – it makes it sound like it's more of a catch-all phrase or a catch-all concept rather than – because like I – is it is it one centralized location? Because it sounds like Coke has their own – or or Epic rather has their own that Cork's Co – ah. Epic has their own that Coke is getting into. Facebook has their own. Like everyone's doing their own metaverse thing. Is it one location? Do all of these metaverses tie in together? Because that's what I'm not understanding about it. That's a great question. Um, and if you don't know the answer, that's fine. Let's let's fucking pause. I, I don't think I have the answer. I don't think it's one central location like in Ready Player One would like the Oasis yeah. where everything lives together. Um I would love to do because actually we just found this article before we went live that yeah. kind of like asks a lot of questions and like provides answers to it. Um, like is the metaverse a kind of internet? Will it replace the internet sort of situation? I think there's where it oh, is wait. now. Did you see this this headline in here or the uh, the, the heading? What's so that? is Fortnite a, a metaverse or Facebook Horizon or is the metaverse all of them put together? Yeah. Exactly. Literally the thing I just asked. That's fantastic. Yeah, exactly. So there's so many questions. And again, we talked about this before. I feel like the only people, they make it seem like everyone's talking about the metaverse. The only yeah. people who are talking about the metaverse are fucking corporations. That's it. <laughs> no one else is talking about this. <laughs> go on the street, go to your job and be like, hey guys, the metaverse. Am I right? It's like saying bringing up NFTs. Like nobody knows what the fuck it is or what it should be used for. Um, do... Watching Ready Player One, the idea of a central location for everyone, it's kind of cool. You know, corporations and podcasters are talking about it. You're right, Tint. We're, we're unfortunately talking about it. But, you know, <laughs> freaking podcasters. I know. We're the worst. We're, we're part of the problem here. <laughs> and I podcasters. Old man yells at cloud. <laughs> <laughs> that should be most of that. I mean, we should change Doug hates, the, hates stuff to old man yells at cloud. I mean, that's yeah. That's I mean, I feel like we were both move, quickly moving into that that realm. <laughs> Jared goes, Doug. No one's talking about it. Also, Doug talks about it. <laughs> well, it's funny because I. That's very funny. I appreciate that, and please keep it coming. And also, if you want to check us out live while we record this and add your own commentary, head over to YouTube.com/slash Mindgap Podcast Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central. Um, I just feel like I see the metaverse and stuff popping up a lot in articles and things that I'm like, who is really talking about this? And I don't right. feel like it's yeah. it's like when Google Glass came out, right? Right. You know, I just feel like that was a select section of the population that was trying it out and actually doing anything with it. But yeah. it was on everyone's tongue, right? Supposedly. Everyone's like, Google Glass. It's like, is it though? Well, when the biggest search engine in the world is telling you that everyone is searching for it, yeah. what else are you going to think? Yeah. You know, but I, I like that question. I, I, this well, this pull quote here is, I think this it says the metaverse is bigger than any one service, except when it's convenient to call that service the metaverse. That's fair. Basically, except when the corporation needs to sell shit. <laughs> well, I love it. I it's do just... feel like any any idea, any pure idea of what the metaverse could have been is 100% going to get bastardized by corporations. Like what? they are going to ruin whatever the, the original Snow White pure intent was of this. Well, also there's a question, will the metaverse turn into just another form of advertising, advertising hey, like, like uh, social? God damn it. <laughs> that door just flew open like someone was. Hey, either <laughs> stay or get out. No in between. Like the SWAT team Hi. was coming in there. Hi, stay or get out. You can stay if you want, 
but you can't just hang out here. I got to close the door. So you're going to stay. You got to stay. Loki, this episode brought to you by Old Man Doug and Loki, now on Disney+. Plus. Yes. Hi. Get comfortable, Doc, because you're with me now. That's right. For the next hour, unleash your farts. I deserve them. Um, so yeah, I what I what, I love it. It's like, is this just another form of advertising, like social media? And the quote here is like, finally, a way to mingle with brands, because that's exactly what we want, right? That's it. Yeah. Which again, I also have to say, is the perfect example of why Coca Cola is getting in early. They want the Nike right. and all these people are in there because they want to have that access because I think I'll give them credit invest now and consider yourself like you've got prime space in here and it because the more crowded it gets you know it might become detrimental who knows so here you go well, I, think, I think that's the like I, to your point I think when you say metaverse <clears throat> anyone who reads any sort of tech news metaverse they think Facebook or Epic. And so what Coca-Cola is doing now is they're tying, they're tethering their name directly to the metaverse. So if you say metaverse, you're like, oh, Coke, Coke's in the metaverse. I've seen articles about that. And so again, it's brand recognition. It's, it's, you're, you're immediately tethering yourself to that. I want to pause it just for a second here. Would we like something like Ready Player One where there is a central place where people can go digitally? The only good thing about Ready Player One is that it was owned by basically a guy and a company, like a software company. Right. So it was homogenized. It was all one thing. Right. And it was there wasn't a lot of advertising in there, so to speak. If you know, it was like all game related stuff. So it, right. in a way, it was quote unquote pure. You know, in in that sort of sense, is does a centralized Thing like that does that sound good does it not yeah. I love, I, tent, tent says that, first of all this is the next step towards idiocracy and also the more centralized the internet the worse it is um i stand 100 percent behind tint in that i i agree fully if if it was the more decentralized you can make something which is why i'm not a like look cryptocurrency i still haven't jumped on board that train i i i'm trying man i really vaguely trying. understand the concepts of it and, and blockchain and all that but i do understand the benefit of something being decentralized and the fact that it does not give one entity ultimate control over it i do think that is a much safer route to go in general i don't want to i i'm I'm making broad sweeping statements, but in general, I do think that decentralization is probably a better idea, especially when it comes to something like this, where you could be collecting data, where you could be collecting, like, when it comes to that kind of stuff, it is, you can't, you just can't trust one person. Well, I agree. Because that, that's the stuff where, it's funny, you go back and you watch some of these movies, you know, even some really rough movies where like things like, one of my favorite ones, I think it was Contagion. Okay. Like Matt Damon or whatever. And that whole film is based on the premise that this pandemic happens across the globe. And the funniest part is at the end of the movie, everyone gets a vaccine. You know, everyone agrees. They take it. They're like, yeah, we're safe. And it's like, no, we can't even do that right in real life. You know, just exactly. So like there's these things where you have to take giant leaps of faith that almost seem natural. You're like, all right, cool. Yeah, there's this one video game company that owns this whole thing called the Oasis and Ready Player One. And everyone's cool. Like, it's like, that's not how it ever happened. No one no. would ever do that. Like no. the bad guys would already be in there. Like <laughs> a million percent. Yeah. They would be like, that's where lobbyists come from. That's how lobbyists were born out of the, out of the ooze and the sludge of that. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where I don't know. I, I, I guess this is kind of like when the iPad first came out, I fail, I fail to see the usefulness of it. Not to say that it's not useful. I just don't see the applications of it to myself personally right now. I don't look at this and Still? be like, the metaverse iPad I get now like oh, definitely oh, I thought, but I initially when the iPad came out we got one yeah. because it was a gift from Jill's work at the time I'm like what are we going to do with this like I don't it's like I can't really play games on it, at least not the games that I want to and it was like one of the earlier you know versions of it I'm like what what's the point of this it's like it's cool yeah. but I don't see the real reason and obviously it's come it's tablets and stuff have just dramatically done amazing things since then Absolutely. so which is great but I look at the, at the the metaverse. I was like, I don't see the application of it right now. I don't see the reason 
um, for me personally. I would love to. I would love to see it something more than just a place for brands to come in and just you know basically open up their trench coat to you right. and be I like, mean, it, look down here, it's not pixelated, you know. It's just yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, what is it, capitalistic escapism. Yeah. Like that's all it. Like at this point, that's all it feels like it is to me. It's like it's escapism where you're sold things. Yeah, it's almost in a lot of ways too. Like, um, uh, fuck, what was that movie? Minority Report, where uh, as people walk by and their eyes get scanned, and like ads and stuff are, yeah, are just yeah. attributed to them, and, and that sort of way. Where I'm like, eh. yeah, I, I don't. If it was one thing that all these corporations were piling into one central thing. And be like, this is the metaverse. But if you've got Facebook Meta, you've got Fortnite, you've got you know, and, and I guess the metaverse is across all these things. Coca Cola, for example, is saying we are going to invest in Meta, we're going to invest in Fortnite, we're going to invest in you know X, Y, and Z. We're going to cross pollinate yeah. across all these. We want our brand to exist in there. So I think that's my problem. Is I'm thinking it's one central place, and that's not what it is. The metaverse exists across many platforms. Well, there's a great another great quote in here in this article. It says the metaverse isn't a single product one company can build alone. Just like the internet, the metaverse exists whether Facebook is there or not. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. which I think that, but again, like I, I still feel like I'm getting conflicting. I'm like, okay, so it exists like the internet, but how is that not just the internet? I don't understand how, how we differentiate what is the metaverse versus what is. I guess, and then this is just my dumb explanation from it. Whatever the metaverse is, it's some sort of interactive community. Whether that's Fortnite, which is a sure. game, whether it's Meta, which is this virtual place with avatars, the metaverse is more than just going to a website, to some Coke dumb website for a promotion where it's like check out starlight it's, you can get a concert it's based on the radiation in fact it is radiation you're dead you have cancer you know like it's it's just it's it's it's, it's weird i don't understand it i don't think any most people do but maybe it's more of a concept and less of a a specific thing and i think this is just my own personal epiphany that's just happened which is like i said it's not the oasis from ready player one it is the concept of the metaverse which maybe yeah. is what they're investing in which to some extent i think these guys should do that they should get involved they should try to do that uh, from a gross corporate perspective it's like yeah get your brand in front of as many people as possible I get guess, people yeah. thinking and talking about it again you gotta do what you gotta do so congrats i guess <laughs> Congrats, uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I still, I mean, I'll, I'll be more interested. I, I do feel like this is the metaverse is something that is in a very infant stages and mm -hmm. it's yet to be fully fleshed out. I think people have some idea of where maybe it's going, but I don't, I really don't think even the people who are investing in it fully understand. I think they're taking the, they're taking the leap and they're saying, here's a bunch of money. Let's figure it out as we go. And it's, it's a, a, a concept that ethereally makes sense to invest in because it could go somewhere interesting. And so I'm the way that I'm looking at it is that I think that we're going to have a better understanding as they have a better understanding of what the fuck it is they're actually building. Well, as other opportunities arise, right? Yeah. People see the success of Fortnite and incorporating concerts from actual people into the game and bringing in different properties and things like that as Meta starts doing whatever the fuck it's going to do. And if it sees success... People will be inspired by that and they will be creating other things. And I think these brands will be ready to also invest in additional things that come about uh, as they go. So, you know, again, I guess good job. So supposedly I still don't know what this is yet, but I, I think I, I think I understand the concept of it and I get why they're investing in it. Um, it's an opportunity to get your brand in front of more people. You are uh, financially obligated to do that. As a yeah. uh, corporate thing that uh, is offering something like that, I just can't wait till like something like Pet Boys. You know, I'm waiting for the Pet Boys announcement of how they're getting involved because they should. You should have a Pet Boys in like you know, the, Fortnite has has vehicles. They have tanks say, how now. Do you get your car serviced in in the metaverse, like, right? You need a Pet Boys. Come you gotta on. have a Pet a Boys. A MCO, come on. Yeah, get it done. Right. Yeah. it's gotta do it. You gotta do it. I man. think at the end of the day, everything else aside, at the end of the day, the big takeaway with the metaverse is go buy Coca Cola diet sugar free zero bite cola. Go drink it. 
This episode brought to you by... I'm not even going to do it. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> by Pepsi Alternative. Jerry brings up a good question. Justin, what's the what's the update on the 2 East 8th NFT? Like, what's going on with that? Oh, yeah, no, look, keep waiting for it, man. You stay right by your phone, and we will call Listen, you the minute that it's done. Join the 2 East 8th Patreon. Put your pre-order down now to see what That's you can it. get. You know? Yeah. It Look, we're... Normally, it's five thousand dollars to get you know to put a plus a, the standard a, industry three thousand dollar fee. You know, well, that's to just res- the three thousand dollar fee is just to reserve your spot in order to put the five thousand dollars down gotcha. for a chance to get an NFT. There you a go, two weeks NFT. So do that now because let me say spots are filling up quick. They are, man. You know, forcing scarcity. It's the best thing in the world. People Absolutely. love it. Artificial yeah. scarcity, as Tint said earlier, <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> so speaking of things that also don't quite make sense, uh, late March, uh, people found out that Disney Plus censored uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, man. What's this about? Um, I don't w- <laughs> with, with what they just released onto Disney Plus, censoring something doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. So apparently um, there was a couple of scenes that were scrubbed and they were replaced with more family friendly versions, apparently. Um, so someone said there was a part in an episode three around the 37 minute mark. Bucky throws a metal bar at a woman back when it aired, the bar went through her shoulder, pinning it to the container. Now it bounces off. And then someone else said, just went to that episode. And they also edited the scene where Zemo kills the guy who made the serum. Yeah. Which I'm like, now, what? Disney just released all the Netflix series. So Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, The Defenders, The Punisher. <laughs> and they chose to censor where a metal bar goes through someone's shoulder. I don't fully understand what we're doing here with this. I... Is it to make sure that, like, do you think Disney's trying to differentiate itself, their original, like, their Disney Plus series that are directly tied into the MCU versus the Netflix kind of what you would call, like, a second cousin series? I'm not that sure. They're related, they're in there, but, like, they're, they... You know, they don't reference, they say, you know, the war on New York or the big green guy. They don't ever really reference things directly. I'm wondering if that's Disney trying to make that separation and say, we are clean. <laughs> Slotty goes, I'm going to watch the scene where Luke Cage and Jessica Jones violently fuck right now. <laughs> tell me if that is still in there. Slotty, please tell well, me that's still Also, there. Jared called it out, too. He said, apparently, uh, it's uncensored already. And I just found an article from the direct. Wait, they- they reverted it. That just came out yesterday that said um, it has now been reversed. Interesting. So um, it's been restored to its original non-updated cut. The move back to the original cut has been in effect since at least April 6th. You know who I blame for this? I blame Bob Chapik. Yeah. Because that guy's a fucking tool. I haven't liked him from the day he took over, and I stand by that today. <sighs> I just don't understand. Like, those are so specific. Like, I guess they had edited out some, yeah, some blood. So, like, the guy that killed the serum, like, I'm looking at the two differences. Like, one of them, the guy has his eyes open, he's laying on the ground, and there's blood. And then the other one, he's just laying there with his eyes closed. It's like, what the fuck? He's he's sleeping. So, I'm going sh- to show this to the, to the chat and the sh- uh, stream here so you can kind of see the differences. Um, but... You can see the differences here with uh, the, the top one's the original, and then they updated it accordingly. I was like, I I remember seeing something years ago. Um, the article blames the IT guys. Something about the VFX not being done in the original cut. Okay, wait, um, is it really? <laughs> um. I, I think I remember seeing something. It was years ago that stuff like this, violence like this, is way more harmful than actually showing it because yes, it makes you see think 
that shooting a gun isn't as bad as you think it is. And they right. referenced, they showed two different, they showed a clip of like um, Goldeneye where James Bond's just shooting a whole bunch of soldiers, but there's no blood at all. He just shoots them and they fall over. And I'm right. like, it's setting the tone that you can still have this brutal violence without seeing the consequences of it. And I said, right. that is far more dangerous than actually seeing someone get blown up and guts going everywhere. Right. I mean, that's the thing that if you when you see like a truly in a, in a film, when you see a true representation of what it looks like when someone is at the receiving end of that, it is very hard to watch and yeah. does its job in letting you know that this is not something to be taken lightly. Yeah. And I understand we're dealing with superheroes and it's a little more comic-y and it's fun. But at the same time, I think that point still holds. I think that point still holds true. As far as blaming the IT person, again, Bob Jake, but go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it says, unlike WandaVision's yeah, modifications where they, forward. you know, forcibly put in the shadow of Doctor Strange flying in to talk to Wanda, uh, the changes made to Anthony Mackie's solo series were unintentional. According to Disney+, Plus, the censored edit was due to an accidental software control issue and would be corrected immediately. What? A soft... So do, are they are they trying to tell us that they have AI... That is going through and editing things for them, and like it, it got overzealous. What the fuck does that even mean? Yeah, I was also like, have you guys seen Moon Knight? That's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, you put Punisher season one and season two on your streaming platform. I'd also argue I'm Daredevil. Sorry, Daredevil is also not not violent either. You know. Oh yeah, no. Daredevil is 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 fucking hardcore, but man, that Punisher season two, yeah, I didn't finish it. I was just like, man, this is just violence porn at this point. I yeah, right. could not finish that series. God, I'm just thinking about season two of Daredevil, where the Punisher is in the prison, and he fucking brutally murders his way through Jesus. <laughs> the yes. corridor of, of of inmates. Ugh. Right. Richie or, goes or, reminds or, me of when Nintendo turned off the blood on Mortal Kombat one. Yes, yes I remember yes. that. Yeah. Jared says, I, I mean, think the blood was all digital, so the censored one is just my VFX. I guess, but it's also, especially with this guy, the serum guy, the shots are very different. One of his, his eyes closed, one of his eyes open, so I don't know. Uh, Noah could do that in, in his sleep. Right. Not, that's easy. I mean, regardless, I'm glad they're they're putting it back to what it was because that's just such a it was such a oddly specific. I love how Tint goes to, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's code for human error. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That that took place. Um, I I appreciate that um, this that Disney's get allowing themselves like a TV fourteen rating for this stuff. I think it needs to be. You know, yes, absolutely. I think we've seen these characters come. Uh, they've gone through a lot, and I'm okay with it. Um, you know, it, it just makes more sense that way. Like th these aren't really for kids. They kind of are, but not really. So. Oh. And honestly, I identify more with this stuff being a little bit darker, them dealing with, you know, I, that's why I liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know, it was dealing with a lot more adult oriented content. Absolutely. And, yeah. Oh boy, Jill goes, so has Loki joined the podcast? Otherwise, I have a missing dog. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, I have, uh, I have uh, assumed control of this dog uh, because the dog comes in. I close the door. That's the dog that's the works deal. for me now. Yes, uh, Jill yeah. is there in the chat. Everyone, ask your favorite HR questions to her now. She's taking all of your HR questions. Uh, if you're just listening to this, uh, you should probably join uh, Tuesdays 8 p.m. Central right here, youtubecom slash podcast so you can get your live HR questions from Jill, because Jill loves nothing more than taking your HR questions live on a podcast that's not hers. So. Who knows what could happen when you join this podcast? Anything's possible. Anything's this is possible. just a sample. <laughs> she wrote hashtag I'm off duty. But are you ever really off duty when yeah. you're in HR, hashtag Jill? Never off. Yeah. Hashtag that, never off. The HR never sleeps, Jill. I think that's that's the that's that's the that's the way it goes. That's nature. <laughs> <laughs> Tint goes. <laughs> Tink goes, Jill, when are the two East 8th NFTs open for pre-orders? Jill has left the chat, she says. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, God. All right, here's Sly's question. If my head of HR says they know all about fucking pay equity and I should check my facts, is that appropriate? 
Oh, God, we got to get Jill back on here at some point. Oh. I know she said that whenever she's been on here, it's always been really serious shit. It's never been fun. But at the same time, I mean, she's just got so many skills, so many, so many things to share. You know, here's the thing. There's enough bad shit going on in the world right now. We can have Jill on and talk about something depressing. No problem. Exactly. That's can, not hard. Because honestly, I would love to do that. I, I would. Jill would hate it. But I would love to find some segment where we're like, hey. Ask HR questions to Jill. And she's like, listen, this is what I do every day. I don't want to do this in my off time, you know? That sounds that sounds like it's an award-winning piece right there. And Sly makes a, a good point. She's never been out here since this peanut gallery has been in place. You're absolutely right. So, That's which I, I'm sure the views would come in great if, if Look, she let's, had gone let's back face, The last time was, uh, in, well, not the last time, but it was in your, yeah, your, uh, your kitchen, uh, your kitchen table. Yeah. And it was, look. Right after the 2016 very, election, it was a very dark on. time. Yeah, it's so it's been <laughs> Jesus six years since she's yeah. been on. So <laughs> it's a very dark time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> well, the other thing is too, they got Logan on there too. Like they're right? not shying away from. They've got Deadpool's inevitably going to be ending ending up on there, right? And exactly. Yes, absolutely. So that's totally going to happen. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I would assume Deadpool would be ending up on there, right? It has to be. It has to. It's a Fox property, yeah. so it's it's definitely got to be ending up on there. Which I mean, is and it's fully it's in the MCU now. Like it, they're yeah, you know, interesting. Yeah, I actually saw Free Guy on there the other day, um, which was it still weirds me out to see like true Fox stuff on Disney which Plus. was funny because I had to think because Free Guy got delayed a couple. Of, have you seen the movie? I have. It got delayed a little bit, right? It has initial release date and they got bumped back a couple yes, of times. Yeah. Because there what were a couple of, uh, there was a couple things in there, which I was like, I wonder if they added that like after the delay, yep. because there's a couple cameos and there's a couple of things that seemed like they could be like, you know what? Now that we're under one roof, I think we have the rights to these things. Can we just well, do it's, this? It's something that I, w- I absolutely, Ryan, I could see Ryan Reynolds and his director and probably pulling Taika in there as well. And just going, all right, let's, how weird can we get with this? Let's right. really push. Let's push the envelope. Let's see how Since much we're here now. Us. Yeah. How hard do we have to ask for this? Like, <laughs> can we, do we just have access to this now? Right. Because we're I here. Gotta say, I did not. Uh, I liked it way more than I thought it would. I, I thought it was fun. It was fine. I like, it was I, a really fun movie. Like it's, I thought it was like, this is going to be a, just a nonsense garbage movie. And yeah. it would bum me out. Cause I, I fucking love Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. And that movie was fun. I thought it was fun. It was enjoyable. I'm not rushing back to go rewatch it, which is usually yeah, but- a, it's a really big thing for me to as to how high of a how good of a movie is. Like how much do I want to rewatch it? Um, but I, I enjoyed it. Sat down, enjoyed it. It was fun. Ryan Reynolds yeah. was a delight. Taika Waititi is great. Um, yeah, it was it was fun. It was great. Yeah. If you're a gamer, you know it was kind of fun watching that stuff. It was a it was a concept. It played out just the way that I thought it was. It would. Yep. There was really no surprises for me. Um, but yeah, it's fine. It was a fine movie, and it was just I saw that on Disney Plus. I'm like, I guess I'll be watching this movie because I want to see here. it. You know, yeah. which again, can't stress it enough. Put your shit on these streaming platforms and do it early. I'm actually kind of annoyed that the Batman is premiering on HBO like next Monday. Why? Because it came out in March. Like it got here super fast. Yeah. And now it's already streaming on HBO. And I'm kind of like... Did it hit the 45-day mark? Is that... I mean, I think it came out the very first weekend in March, like March 4th or something like that. So that might be right around the 45-day mark. And it is a Warner Brothers yeah. film, so... I was going to say, I know Warner Brothers, after after the whole debacle that they had with the day and date, where they just kind of announced it and they didn't, they didn't talk to anyone about it, they went back in their... I know that some of them they're doing a 30 day window, some they're doing a 45 day window. It depends on like what deal they struck with, uh, with, with the productions involved and everything. But um, yeah, that that definitely I agree. Like when I saw that was, I saw a um, HBO will do like that, like the hype commercials or the sizzles of like what they've got coming up. And I saw a flash of that. I'm like, wait, did I just see the Batman on there? And then like a whole clip of it. I'm like, whoa, that seems shockingly fast because I just it's saw amazing. it. In yeah. the theater, like yeah. two weekends, two two weekends ago. Oh, I like I go. Two weekends ago, um, we just did a podcast on it. The yeah. size of a tangerine. The tangerine. I just told Jill, I was like, "Hey, uh, that's coming out. We should watch it." And she's like, oh, "I can't tell you the last time Jill and I have watched a movie together because yeah. 
it just doesn't happen. I was like, do you, do you want to watch? She goes, that's an awful big one to hop back into. Isn't that like almost three hours? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, and now they can't watch it. I was like, absolutely not. She can't watch this. (laughs) Absolutely not. I go, first of all, first of all, I pushed my luck with Natalie and I asked her if she wanted to watch Indiana Jones over the weekend. And uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I foolishly or? started with Raiders of the Lost Ark. That huh? kid got so bored watching that movie. And I was sitting there going like, yeah, yeah, this, this, yeah. this movie, like the intro was great, right? He's yeah. in the temple. Yep. He's doing all that stuff. As soon as that was over, she was just starts rolling around being like, <laughs> uh, I'm like, I know they're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. This means nothing to you. Oh, the scene and Hitler. The yeah. Oh, like, man. You, just, you know nothing about it. And then it's like she makes it to the part where he goes to Tibet to get the, the, the this part of the staff. And, you know, there's the Ooh, fight. She, made it. she actually made it pretty far. In. And then we got to Cairo and all that sort of. And then she was just kind of like, ah, I'm over it. I'm like, yeah, this. You know what? Come to think of it. When I was a kid, this one wasn't my favorite either. Yeah. I really like Temple of Doom, which looking oh, back on that, like when I was a kid. Problematic. Um, but. Last Crusade's hands down the best one, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I should have started with that one because it's not like it mattered. It's not like it would have mattered because the other ones don't really connect. Uh, yeah. They're just like their own separate things. But for some yeah. reason, I'm like, we got to watch it in order. I'm like, no, you don't. You it's kind of like Bond in that way. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like a mini, like three mini Bonds. Yeah. yeah. Tint says Raiders of the Lost Ark is perfectly paced. Not for a six year old, sir. Right. Not for us. That movie is not for a six year old. I'll tell you that much. It's perfectly paced, dependent on the audience. Yeah. Natalie was bored out of her fucking. Now, this is also a kid who just was just got done watching a movie full of dinosaurs. So um, well, that's her too. she was very much engrossed with that. And this movie was, you know, the, especially the scene where the uh, guys from the U.S. government are like, we've uh, intercepted a cable from Germany and they're talking about this and Indiana Jones goes on to explain the Ark of the Covenant, the history behind it and everything. Natalie was just. When he goes to the chalkboard, he draws the... Yeah. (laughs) She was... Nope. I was like, yeah, maybe when you're older, you can enjoy that one. But for now, it's... Because I showed her the trailer for it. I was like, does that look like fun? She's like, yeah, because all the things they showed looked like fun. Right. But Horseback riding and right? this stuff. Yeah, exactly. Why did it have to be stakes? You know, like... Right. And I was also thinking towards the end of the film, like, when they open the arc and that guy's face melts and I'm like, maybe... You're thinking ahead, you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> I'm like, this maybe, maybe isn't a good idea. Maybe we shouldn't do this, you know? I would probably go for Crystal Skull to introduce a kid to the franchise. You're probably right, but I don't own it for good reason. Here's the thing. As much as it pains me to admit that, that probably is the best one to introduce a six-year-old to. You're right. Because it is. it has the emotional intelligence of a six-year-old. Richie says, should have gone National Treasure or Tomb Raider. Ah, I'm not really in for either of those. So Ah, but which Tomb Raider? Yeah, right. Indeed. Who cares? Indubitably. Yeah, those aren't really, I don't think are really her style right now yeah. um hopefully when she gets older she'll appreciate it but i was just like i gotta try i guess i don't know we'll see we'll see if she likes it she didn't but that's okay it can't all be gems you know i pushed my luck i and the thing is i knew better <clears throat> i knew yeah. better but i it, was like let's do it you're saying like the practical side of you took over and said you shouldn't do this but then like the fun dad side of you took over and said yeah yeah let's give it a shot yeah which is why, Doug, you always should listen to your practical side. You're right. We Everyone should. who listens to this podcast to listen to your practical side. In fact, you got the questions, we got the answers. All you do is ask. Practical, 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 practical. ask practical, Doug. It is that time again for Ask Practical Doug. If this is your first time here, there's a small Doug that lives inside Big Doug, and the small Doug is known as Practical Doug. Practical Doug guides Big Doug in most of life's decisions, and he graces us with his presence every week on this podcast. So if you want to ask Practical Doug a question, you can either submit via social media using hashtag AskPracticalDoug. You can jump on live with us on Tuesdays starting at 8 p.m. Central, and you can ask us in the chat, or you hop onto our Discord. You can pop it in the comments of YouTube. Lots of ways to contact us and ask Practical Doug a question. Today's question, I'm just going to scroll right down to the the newest one. And again, Slotty is just killing it with the questions. I think the last two or three have been from him. Slotty wants to know, Practical Doug, you cooked dinner. Sorry, scenario. (laughs) 
You cook dinner Fade for your in. girlfriend last night. Fade in. <laughs> you cooked dinner for your girlfriend last night, and you thought you did a good job until you were watching videos on her phone and a text from her mom, he must have copied and pasted, popped up and said, quote, I'm sure he tried his best. Just eat it. What do you do? Well, Practical Doug is also go with a flow, Doug. And Practical Doug interesting would probably be like so you didn't like it <laughs> with if, just a, a hint of sadness Brad Doug voice. would want some realistic feedback because it's like yeah. listen if you if you really truly don't like this give me some feedback so I can make it better or I won't make it again right because I don't want to go through the effort of making you a meal that you don't enjoy right and as I've gotten older I've realized how much I appreciate even if the feedback kind of hurts your feelings a little bit it's really important because like right now, Natalie will tell me, she's like, I don't like this. I'm like, I need you to tell me more. Mm -hmm. She's like, well, my stomach is telling me that I want to eat it, but my brain is telling me not to. And I was like, that's not going to work for me because that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> right. Tell me about it. And if I suggest things, then she just goes, uh-huh. So I'm like, you know, because I'm like, is it too spicy? She'd be like, yes. And I'm like, I just gave you an answer that you're saying yes to because you don't right. want to eat it. So I have to be like... Tell me more. Describe to me what you don't like. Right. You know, is it, tell me about the texture. Tell, and I've tried to get that out of her because I really want to understand what she doesn't like because she's six and right. she doesn't fucking, it's just bonkers. But in this situation, I would be like, hey, I'm sorry you didn't like the meal. Um, can you tell me what you didn't like? Did you not like any of it? Because if, if not, if you didn't like any of it, we'll just, we'll take that recipe out of the, out of the book altogether. You know, I think you're overlooking the bigger part of this question, though, is that why was she texting her mom about this? Probably like, because she, she needed to vent to, to someone because she's also kind of like me and that she does probably didn't want to hurt my feelings. And she's just like, ah, this sucks. Uh, it's it's not very good. I don't like it. What should I do? Yeah. And the mom's like, just eat it. You know, <laughs> so I would look at that as like, hey, listen, I just tell me, tell me these things. Let's save ourselves the trouble here yeah okay because i want to make sure that if i make you something i really want you to enjoy it and if you don't enjoy it that hurts more than you just like just shoveling it down your throat like i don't want you to do that like tell me tell me what you like and what you don't like so that we can get through this together <laughs> and hopefully i can make you something maybe i could change it up maybe you're like ah, i don't really like you know onions i'm like me too i hate onions that's fantastic we can get married and i'd marry her on the spot you know or you could just say, hey, you don't like my cooking. Your mom seems nice. What's she up to? Yeah, right? <laughs> What's What if it's your signature dish, says Slotty? Doug's six-hour smoked pork butt. I'd be like, well, I mean, um, McDonald's is right down the street. So, I mean, if you want to go get in the car and go that, I mean, I guess I have a dinner and lunch for the next three or four days. So, bye! You know, like, <laughs> you don't like my smoked pork okay when well, doug smokes a butt for six hours i'm just saying we'll get to the butt in a second more like we'll get to it in six hours you know Ooh, hold on nice. to your butts hold on to you i don't have jurassic do park <laughs> hold, hold this hold, <laughs> 10 goes sweet more homemade french fries to myself yeah if it's anything that I make nowadays and someone's like, well, I didn't like it. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, give me your plate. <laughs> it's going to be my leftovers for tomorrow. I really, 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 really thought I had hold on your butts. I, I thought I pulled that. I mean, you should, but. Uh, oh, I thought I pulled that. Damn it. But at the end of the day, I would, I would prefer feedback from that just so yes. I could help because, you know, I do that now. Like there's certain things that I like that Jill doesn't, but. I'll leave it out of a... She's really not into beans of any kind. She'll okay. tolerate green beans, but that's about it. But No anything, legumes. No legumes of anything. And if there's something in it, I'm like, oh, especially black beans. I fucking love black beans. Yeah, they're like good it, for you, buddy. She's just like, nah. I, I was like, because if I do, she won't. And I, I can get that if you put a big chunks of onions and shit. I'm like, cool, I guess I'm going to make my own dinner because <laughs> I hate onions. Um, So, yeah, just... If someone was just gonna, you know, not gonna be able to tell me that, I'd be kind. I'd be like, I wish you'd tell me, but you know. I'm waiting for the day, man. I'm waiting for the day when you turn when you turn the cord on onions. And you say it won't happen, but here's the thing. 
couple years back, would you have ever said that you'd be eating the way you're eating now? Never. Would you ever, you know, like the stuff that you've opened yourself up to is astronomical. And so I just feel like one day there's going to come a day where you're going to turn the corner on onions. I will probably do it because it's, it's how I consume red bell peppers now and spinach, which is I cut it up real small. Okay. And put it in so it sort of becomes a part of the dish. It doesn't stand out because most of this stuff is texture for me. Okay. So like if you give me a spinach leaf whole, that's not going to be f- – I just imagined I was like, I got to eat this. I saw the, your body had a physical yeah. reaction just now. I was like, I would the, te- the texture still bothers me. But yeah. when I cut it up real small and throw it in, like because I make chipotle fries like once a week and it calls for red bell pepper and spinach. Mm-hmm. I cut them up both real small, and I can enjoy the flavors of it without having to deal with the texture. Also, it cooks down really well, which is yeah. good. And so Sully goes, so is raw onion better for you than cooked onion? I'd rather do cooked. Raw onion, absolutely not. Fuck that. Can't stand the texture of it, and that flavor okay. would be way too powerful. I'm willing to bet I could handle more cooked down onions. But I'd have oh, to get a- What's that? I think you could. I think if, if they were... If it was balanced in the dish and it was adding a flavor rather than being the centerpiece of the dish, yeah. I absolutely think you could. And if it was if it was cooked down enough to where it lost some of its tr- structural integrity. Yeah. Because you know? I know it's part of most things. Like like the what is it, the 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 holy trinity of like was it carrots, celery, and onions? Like for yeah. most things. Like that's just yeah. part of what it is. I saw an interesting thing to make sauce the other day where uh, Joshua Wiseman put uh, cut a an onion in half and put that in this tomato sauce to make a pizza sauce and he let the onion flavor infuse in and they just took the two halves out he goes now the onions have released their flavor into it and you can just not have the onions in it i'm like now we're talking that's what i'm talking about man very interesting now i get it so, now I get it. so that's okay, what it is well, so the Brandon duck says exactly. give feedback give valuable effective feedback and maybe your lives will be better and then go fuck the mom Welcome to the Throwdown. Hey, yo. It's time for the Throwdown. If you're new here, this is the time part of the show. The time of the part of the show. The time of the part of the show. The time of the part of the show where we take two things, we put them in a ring, and they have to fight to the death, and we have to decide which one makes it out alive. Whatever whatever member uh, of the council was in here tonight has been drinking. Why? Because they put them up under recommendations rather than throwdown. That's all good. That's fine. We all know what it means. We all know what it means. I'm. I'm, But the the thing is, I'm here for it. I want them to drink more. Yes. All right. So uh, let's see what we got this week. Justin, hit that drum roll. This week we have uh, the Mothman from the Mothman Prophecies versus Killer Moth. (laughs) Justin's like, I don't know what you just said. I love it. Cool. Uh, I'm familiar with the Mothman from the Mothman prophecies. Uh, I'm not familiar with Killer Moth, which is, I don't know, is this from a DC universe or a Marvel universe? They seem like some sort of character. But DC Comics is what they're from. So, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm still trying to get through all the pop ups here. <laughs> I know. That's always fun. I'll take uh, Mothman from Mothman prophecies. Um, all right. So, this is. A, it's the main focus of an iconic novel, The Mothman Prophecies. So this is a strange phenomena uh, in Point Pleasant, Virginia. Um, I actually remember seeing the movie for this. It had I never Richard Gere. I remember hearing about it, but I never saw it. Yeah. Right. Was it good? Did you like it? Yeah, I mean, it was fine. It was like a late 90s, quote unquote, thriller, supernatural thriller movie. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Um, so this thing has superhuman physical characteristics, true flight, large size, uh, has fear manipulation, radioactive electromagnetic aura. Okay. Um, Jesus. Can move silently, produces light, heat manipulation, longevity, man- memory manipulation, can cause amnesia, shape shifting, size shifting. Resistance to fear manipulation, status effect inducement, madness manipulation, radiation, blah, 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 Lots of immortality. There we go. In the beginning of the novel, it's alluded to possibly being a tulpa, whatever the hell that means. This would allow the Mothman to exist as long as people believe it will. Ooh. 
I love shit like that. Right. That, that, in American Gods by Neil Gaiman, one of my, oh, I love, there was a component of that. Also kind of in the Sandman comics as well, the idea that these gods only exist right, or are as powerful as the belief in them. Because like in some of those, I think American Gods too, there are some old gods, but so few people believe in them that they're incredibly weak. But right. they barely are hanging on to life because they're talked about. But then there's other gods that have just are constantly mentioned, so their belief makes them very, very strong. I love shit like that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> attack potency, wall level. Presumably killed cattle, apparently. That's what's listed here. All right. Uh, attack strength, cattle. <laughs> Lifting strength, average human, in parentheses, easily lifted a large dog. <laughs> okay. You almost got a spit take on that one. That almost. Was almost. Almost. Easily uh, lifted a large dog. I love this. Intelligence, unknown, at least sentient, <laughs> at least above average. Humans are as mentally advanced as cockroach to injured. Okay. All right. So what I do like about this creature is that it seems like it may not necessarily be incredibly strong, but it seems like it causes it's like a mental game with this creature. Okay. It's like uh, creating fear and, and things like that. So, Justin, take us through Killer Moth. Who is Killer Moth? Killer Moth, interesting. Having decided that the lawbreakers of Gotham City needed a costume protector, just as honest citizens had Batman, Drury Walker emulated the Dark Knight in every way, copying his paraphernalia, yada, yada, yada. What's up? Did your mic go out? Oh, no. It's all good. He gave a thumbs up. So this guy copied Batman and decided he was going to be the supervillain version of Batman. Uh, the killer moth. He came to resemble a dark mirror image of Batman, even adopting the alter ego of a wealthy philanthropist similar to Bruce Wayne. Uh, Moth was motivated by greed rather than justice and only served the criminal underworld for a price. Uh, Wolf also says um, that the, the Mothman from Mothman Prophecies uh, is a harbinger. It shows up at the events of large destructive events hours before they happen. That's right. That's true. Like there's supposedly a bridge that fell apart in Virginia or something that people said they saw the Mothman beforehand. So... <laughs> Slotty goes, so wait, did Mothman kill Justin's mic in order to win this fight? Maybe. And by the way, my dog just let rip a fart. It yeah? is terrible. Am I back? Me. I think so. I hear you. You hear me? Good. Okay. Whew. Whew. That was a that was a thing. Also, I love the fact that you called out that your dog was going to gas you, and she did. She totally did. She lived up to her end of the bargain. It smells yeah. horrible in here right now. Is your dog like normally that gassy? Oh, yeah. She's a toots magoots. Let me tell you. Got it. Yeah, all the time. My favorite thing is last night, Natalie tried to get her to sit, and she did. On her way down, she farted, and then when she hit the floor, she farted. So it's like, bah, bah. so double, double toots. Well played. All right. So anyway, Justin, I got the intro in. Take us through the powers and stats of uh, yes. this guy. So Killer Moth has uh, superhuman physical characteristics, uh, master at weaponry, Vehicular mastery, martial arts, gilding, enhanced senses, extrasensory perception. Uh, it, it uses the uh, most of this is just listing weapons it can use. Um, silk production, which is interesting. And then low to mid regeneration. It's got attack potency of a small building level. Um, should be uh, comparable, but physically weaker than Batman can fight off Barbara Gordon. Okay. All right. Uh, at least small. Let's see. Um, so attack potency. He can attack. Uh, speed at least supersonic, possibly hypersonic. Uh, lifting strength is unknown. It's never attempted to lift anything. Striking strength, small building class. Uh, durability, small building level. Can take, can tank hits from Batman. Stamina is above average, range, standard melee, got a couple weapons, and above average intelligence. Despite being somewhat of a joke, Killer Moth is a good marksman and flyer and is stated by the Bat Computer as an accomplished hand-to-hand -hand combatant. Not sure what that has to do with intelligence, but there you go. The weakness cannot tolerate anyone making fun of him, 
slash none notable. I feel like that's contradictory. Um, <laughs> Wolf goes, wait a second. Can fight Barbara Gordon pre or post wheelchair? Because that changes things entirely. Very it's good point. Very good call out, Wolf. Uh, Absolutely. It doesn't say. Um, but and I, will- I feel like we missed saying that it is a tier 9A. Yes. So. Um, I feel like Killer Moth is at a, at their core a human. Yes. And I feel like Mothman, injured if you will, is something beyond a human. And that being the case, I feel like the Mothman would be able to create fear and would be able to manipulate Killer Moth to their advantage. Um, now, you could also argue that if Killer Moth lives in the DC universe, he's probably seen some shit. So fear, how much fear gets to him? How much does something extra planar or unusual? Because if you're seeing that every day in the DC universe, then maybe it won't be as effective. You're like, oh, great. Yeah, the thing, this thing is talking to me. Who gives a shit? You know, I don't know. I I'm in full agreement that the fact that Mothman can manipulate fear and it's all a mental game. Um, let me just scroll back down to where He's we got have memory manipulation. Powers and abilities. Yeah. And we're looking at m- novel, not the film, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fear manipulation memory. Yeah. Shape shifting. Yeah. Th- look, I, any time that you can get inside someone's head and if that person you're getting inside their head they have a weakness for being made fun of. I'm sorry, but that's just that's that's an ace in the hole. That's game set and match for me. I Killer Moth has seen some shit for sure, but the Mothman is a little bit more. I guess the only thing is, could if if Mothman Killer Moth rather, if they're able to move at hypersonic speeds, could they uh, could they move? Could they just like zip around, kind of like the Flash does, mm-hmm. zip around them and just just pummel them as they're zipping around? Yeah. Could it? Could he turn it into a physical fight? Is the question. I, it, I guess it depends on if if Killer Moth can get through the fear and mental manipulation. Right. Because if if he can and he can do some physical damage, I think he'll beat the shit out of Mothman. Yes. But I think because the Mothman has such limited strength i think it's because they have such strong mental manipulation it could do something as simple as just put thoughts in killer moth's head making fun of him making him feel insecure and just playing on those fears and i feel like that would make him crumble if that were the case yeah Yeah, memory mean memory manipulation like to immediately pull up a memory or you manipulate a memory where this guy has just been like brutally brutally made fun of that's just and if that's if Killer Moth has the weakness of cannot tolerate anyone making fun of him. I don't know what that does to him if that puts him on tilt. I don't know if that if that turns him from Killer Moth into Charaxes, which is the uh, it's yeah. the the next Pokemon level of the character. Yeah, the, the evolution. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, man, I don't know. I, I got to give it to Mothman with this one, man. Yeah. I I think I think this is a game set and match for him. I agree. I think. Uh, All right, there Mothman it is, Mothman. Wins. There you go. Thank you. That's about the only good drumming I can do. Air drumming's the best because uh, you always hit your target, you know? Absolutely. Every time. My drummer, Every fr- time. my drummer friend said that. He's like, yeah, air drumming's great because you never actually have to hit the snare. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, good point. Uh, Justin, what do you have to recommend this week? Uh, you have to watch Severance on Apple TV+. Plus. It is... Um, I think Dan Erickson is the guy who created it. Uh, Ben Stiller directed like five or six out of the nine episodes. The other woman who there's a woman who directed the other handful of episodes and she did an incredible job starring Adam Scott and um, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking Uh, Christopher Walken and um, John Turturro and some other, like just other people that you'll know, Patricia Arquette uh, there's a few people who are like, I've seen that person in other things. The It is such a unique, wonderfully unique, engaging, thrilling story. It's got 
elements of dark humor in it. It's got a little bit of thriller to it. It's got some sci-fi elements. It's got mystery elements. It is just, if you're sitting there going like Hollywood is out of new ideas, this is this was very refreshing to watch because this felt very new and yeah. very like like they they came up with a really fucking cool weird cool concept and it shot beautifully acted superbly well well done so I cannot highly I cannot recommend it any higher Severance on Apple TV Plus it's nine episodes in the first season it's been renewed for a second season uh, get on it it's really good yeah um, what do you got. You know, I'm trying to think. Um, the only real new thing I've watched recently was Free Guy, and I'm like, I, yeah, sure, check it out. It's on. It's free on Disney Plus. You're, you're not going to be out anything. Uh, it's it's a fun movie, especially if you're a gamer. There's some fun references there and and, and whatnot. It's 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 fun. Yeah, cool. It's nothing amazing. You won't be surprised by anything, but it's enjoyable. You should check it out. <laughs> and you know what? What I've learned from Jared is sometimes that's okay. It doesn't have to be amazing or terrible it could be just fine and that's a just fine movie you should check it out you should also check us out on all our social medias at mind gap podcast you should also check out our youtube channel youtube.com slash mind gap podcast where we stream live on tuesdays at 8 p.m central for our podcast and saturdays at 8 p.m central for our video game stream which is super exciting um yeah you know you leave a comment uh, on any of our videos uh like subscribe do all those wonderful things we appreciate it always every day forever you're the best thank you and also please don't forget to check out justin online as well on instagram and twitter at justin underscore michael spelled m-i-k-e-l it's the fun way of spelling it and while you're in the online realm check us out on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify uh google Podcasts, samsung listen any place where you find and consume quality podcasts you will find and be able to consume us Go ahead and leave us a review, write, uh, or write one, uh, rate, subscribe, all those things. And then uh, give a peep to 2 East 8th on the social medias and 2 East 8th.com. Keep an eye on what we've got coming up. Hoorah. 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 Oh, uh, shout out. Uh, we just, uh, 2 East 8th, uh, the Peekaboo Man, which was our most recent horror short film, just won best horror film at the Florence Film Awards for the month of uh, March. It's a monthly film fest, and we won March. Yeah. Italy showed us some love. Fuck yeah. Way to go, Florence. A boppity boopy to you. (laughs) With that being said, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Chat, thank you. Listeners, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.